Hello friends, oh, what's up, hope you are doing well, uh, this is your host Wafai Ajaz and today uh, I would like to talk about uh, a romantic poem from class 9th, Beauty, uh, which is written by John Massfield. So before I proceed my dear, uh, let me tell you. Uh, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, just subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon. So here we go. Uh, so my dear, uh, before I come to text, uh, let's have a brief introduction regarding uh, the poem Beauty. My dear, uh, the poet says that he has seen the beauty of the rising sun and the beauty of the setting sun. Yani I am going to tell you the poem ka gist bata raha He has seen it on the plains and also on the hills where the wind blows. These sights appear to him to be very impressive and beautiful. They appear to be as full of beauty and melody as the slow old tunes of Spain. The poet says that he has seen the beautiful daffodils blossoming in the month of April. He has seen the lovely grasses that spring up with the coming of this month. He has also enjoyed the soft warm showers of the April rain. Then the poet mentions some other things of beauty that he has seen or heard. He says that he has heard the song of the blossoms. He has heard the old song of the sea. He has seen strange lands while standing under the arched white sails of ships. But he says that the loveliest thing God has ever shown to him is his beloved's voice. Ab dekhi, kaise shair nature ke objects ko apne mahbooba se compare karte hain ki Allah Taala ne jitni bhi hume niyamatein di hain, chahe wo hawa ki shakal mein ho, chahe wo nature ki shakal mein ho. चाहे फूल की शक्ल में हो चाहे वो अप्रैल रेन की शक्ल में हो लेकिन शायर को लगता है कि लवलीएस्ट थिंग दैट हर गॉड हैज शोन हिम इज इज बिलाउड वॉइस हर हेयर हर आईज एंड द डियर रेड करू ऑफ हर लिप्स सो नाउ लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट द टेक्स्ट I have seen dawn and sunset on moors and windy hills. So my dear, this is the first line of this poem. I have seen dawn and sunset on moors and windy hills coming in the solemn beauty like slow old tunes of Spain. So in the first two lines the poet says that he has seen dawn and dusk on moors and windy hills which bestow the great happiness and satisfaction like the wonderful tunes of Spain. The time of dawn and dusk are as pleasing and soothing as the wonderful music of Spain. So my dear, up uh, the poet has used uh, um, simile here. Tashbiyah di hai and he has used the word like. The poem in which the entire situation is shown is dawn, afternoon and dusk. The poem opens with a depiction by the poet of his encounters with nature 
that demonstrates the impact of romanticism on him by discussing nature and scenes. Having seen dawn and sunset on moors and windy hills, the reference to Spain brings an excerpt to this poem. The poet has used several poetic devices in the poem. Uh, in the second stanza, the poet implies a simile uh, coming in Solomon beauty like slow old tunes of Spain. So in this line, the speaker makes the readers understand the great happiness and satisfaction the poet feels with the arrival of his beloved by comparing such event to wonderful music. Okay. Chalte hai dusre stanza ki or. I have see I have seen the lady April bringing in the daffodils bringing the spring grass and the soft warm April rain. So in the third and fourth lines uh, the poet says that he has seen the month of April and spring season which brings uh, uh, the daffodils, uh, which br brings fresh grass and soft warm rain. Here the month of April uh, refers to spring season and the poet has uh, personified it by endowing with the ability to bring something. It has also been called here Lady April. Huh. So I have heard the song of the blossoms and the old chant of the sea and seen strange lands from under the arched white sails of ships. So in these lines the poet continues his praise of beautiful things. Pahle usne dawn or dust sunset ko tarifi ki hai, lady april ko tarifi ki hai, grass ko tarifi ki hai, soft warm rain, april rain, it has praised soft warm april rain. Or शायर अभी इसको खत्म नहीं कर रही है, बल्कि the poet continues his praise of beautiful things. Uh, in these lines, uh, he talks about musical beauty in combination with natural uh, beauty. Uh, beauty. He says that he has heard the song of blossoms and chant of the sea. In addition to this, he has witnessed the su uh, surprising lands from under the orchard sails of the ship. The song of blossoms alludes to soft rustic music of the blossoms produced when the breeze blow through them. The chant of the sea refers uh, to the music created by ripples in the sea. So, आगे बढ़ते हैं. But the loveliest things of beauty God ever has shown to me are her voice and her hair, eyes and the dear red curve of her lips. So in these ending lines, uh, the poet's focus of praising beauty shifts from the beauty of nature to the beauty of a woman. Now you can see that in the above lines, uh, the poet was uh, admiring nature, admiring the nature, the poet was praising the nature. And now you can see how the eyes uh, the poet's focus of praising nature shifts from the beauty of nature to the beauty of a woman. He expresses that the beauty of his beloved surpasses all other beauties. क्योंकि ये यहाँ कहते हैं, but the loveliest thing of beauty, यानी इस तमाम चीजों से दिखाएं करन। He expresses that the beauty of his beloved surpasses all other beauties. The poet expresses that the loveliest things of beauty uh, God has ever shown to him are his beloved's voice and her magnetic hair, 
and dear red curve of her lips the slow old tunes of uh, spain uh, the song of blossoms chant of the sea have been compared to the voice of the poets below so the poet perhaps alludes to touching the crimson lips of his beloved uh, while from he witnesses the amazing experience that make him forget all other beauties so uh, it was a short uh, discussion on the poem uh, beauty which uh, written by john edward westfield so my dear before i end my discussion i uh, once again I want to tell you uh, if you have not subscribed my channel yet just subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon Allah Hafiz